Jay here from Stretford Paddock. This is Transfers Live, which means get involved in the chat and the comments. Joining me, I think this is for our first ever Transfers Live. I've never done a Transfers Live before. So Have I you not? Are no, you nervous? Not. Are you excited? Honestly. Can you I've not believe been, your luck? I've never been so nervous in my life. I'll be twitching <laughs> for the next 40 minutes now. Can you not? I'm actually on Stretford Paddock Transfers Live with Jay. This is amazing. Dream come true. All is... the way back in the full time <laughs> Devils days, I'm honestly still dreaming. <laughs> You look very sincere when you say that. Anyway, this is Callum Stone. I'm sure you all know Callum. He's been on our watch alongs, previews, reviews. You've done all sorts for us. Back from the Devil's Days. Oh, so Stratford Paddock. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we do love you having, having you on the channel, especially when me and you're on together. It's proper mank, you know, when me and you're it's on together. It's a bit too mank sometimes. Do you think so? Yeah. I've just had Scotty on as well. Yeah, he's, Scotty he's, was on before. Now it's me. I feel like I've, Old Trafford, Gorsill. Honestly, it's, it's quite I, a lot, isn't did it? Did I tell you I had a bit of a, a role-play experience as well because my accent with Eric Tanag. Oh, right. Yeah, happened. I did see. Wow, I mean, go on. We was over in uh, Perth and um, we were in the uh, press conference and Mac has got the nod, you know, for the last question. So I thought, oh, I've got a minute. What's going on here? I'm, I'm taking this. I'm having this. He can have his question, but I'm having one as well. So I asked him about the maturity of the young players and he was like, you are. What, what are you on about? No idea. <laughs> so I thought I'd help him by just saying it the same way I said it the first time. And he was like, sorry? And I'm thinking, oh my God. And then uh, I explained what I meant and he answered. But yeah, it was a bit of one. I've got, got people answer. sniggering behind me going, Michiane, hey, all them lot from the Athletic. Um, anyway, <laughs> I digress. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about, yes, that your eyes haven't deceived you. Jamie Vardy, we've not just made this up. This is a story doing the rounds, which I'm going to get into. I don't know, maybe Rebecca Vardy's been leaking more stories to papers, trying to get her husband a new deal. Uh, this kid, Sesco, he's got a nice haircut, him, hasn't he? He's better airline than hey, me anyway. You could set your watch to that airline. We'll be talking about the kid on the end. I don't know who he is. I've never heard of him. Some friend kid, someone I don't know. So get involved in the chat and the comments. First of all, though, um, I'm going to get into a bit of a positive step forward, I think, anyway. And this is the Man United share scheme. Now, we know that um, organisations like Must have been working with the club to try and get fans able to buy shares. Now, you can see a new share scheme. United have reached an agreement in principle with Must, that's the Manchester United Supporters Trust, uh, regarding a fan scheme. The scheme would allow, um, would comprise uh, new shares being issued that would be part of a B category, meaning that would match those owned by the Glazers who own United and have 10 times the voting weight of A category, which are owned by most investors. It always seems like you think A is the best, don't you? Like, you know, you've got an A, the A team and all that jazz, but no, in this case, B is better. Um, that gives you voting rights, it gives you stuff like that. What the Glazers tend to do when they issue shares is they sell a load of the A ones, which give them money, but don't give anyone any influence over the club. Now, this is just a step forward. This doesn't mean that me and you can, you know, Put our pennies together because we're both multi billionaires, aren't we? Buy a yeah. load of these shares and suddenly take over Manchester United. I think there's a limited amount from what I gather. Um, it's just it's the first sort of step towards being a bit more fan owned. I know a lot of people will be looking at it and going, mm, well, is this, does this mean anything? Actually, we're not going to be able to have much of an influence, much of a say because of the limited amount of shares. Plus, it's the Glazers. Do we trust them? No, we don't. But I think. Let's put it this way. I'm not going to be you know, doing cartwheels about that, but it feels like a step towards eventually where we want to get. Where do you, what do you feel on it, Carl? I kind of agree with everything there. I think it is a step in the right direction. Look, it's not going to pull up trees and we're definitely not going to start owning a club as fans, but it's the right direction, I think, to go in. Ultimately, there's something I've seen in a thread on Twitter today as well that effectively the money that does come into the club from these, uh, from these shares does not go to the Glazers. It goes to the club, stays within the club, to be used by the club. And if that's the case, then it's money that the Glazers can't take out of the club, which, as we know, it's 122 million since 2016. Yeah. Now, as a club that isn't even in operating in profit at the moment, usually businesses who operate in profit then pay out to shareholders in dividends. The fact that we're still doing that when we're operating at a loss says to me the Glazers clearly don't care and all they want is the money. So I feel like it's a right step, and I think there's a lot of credit due here for... Uh, for most, I think they get a lot of criticism sometimes from, especially from a lot of people online on Twitter. I see, and I think sometimes you do need to just let them do what they need to do. Sort of sit in the background, be patient, and just see what they're doing because they clearly do have a relationship with the club and those up at the top of the club. And it's right that the that they do, and it's right that they do represent the fans. And we might not always agree with what they do, but ultimately they are there to represent us. If you don't agree with what they do, you need to tell them. But they are there and they do have the interest of the club at heart. So I think sometimes you do need to just be patient with it. And I think this is the perfect step 
for something that hopefully in the longevity of it gets rid of the glazers. I understand that's the number one aim of everyone and to, to quite a few this, won't, this still won't be enough but it's a step in the right direction at the end of the day and I think that's probably the best thing that it is at the moment. No, I, I think you're right there. Andy Green, who you've mentioned there, he's, yeah. a, like, he's a football finance expert, he's a big United fan. Um, he's done a thread on it. His Twitter is Anders Red. So, like, well, that's how I got my information. Yeah. I saw that and I thought it was a really good, basic way of yeah. understanding it all, to be honest. It, you know, he breaks it down into 140 characters, which my attention span needs because I'm a bit of a moron. But Well, I, you know, I'm not the most articulate or well versed when it comes to finances as we all know so i usually you know rely on things people like kieran Maguire, for example we've had on yeah. the channel quite a few times uh, from the price of football he's a great guy anders red is another one andy green knows his stuff uh, he sort of broke this down and he said very similar um he, he, he talks about the fact that the fans advisory board have to sign off on this as well i don't think that um, this money goes to the Glazers, like you say. It's, oh, sorry, they have to sign off on it. It says uh, the proceeds from the share issue stay in the club and the use of them has to be signed off by the Fans Advisory Board. This money doesn't go to the Glazers. This is a pilot scheme, so it's only very new. Um, he also says about the fact that, you know, this this isn't going to suddenly give United fans a big say in the club and this is only a pilot scheme where you can get some of the shares, but it is a step towards it. And that's basically what he says. Go and have a look on his thread because I don't want to go through all that because it'll take me ages and I think you get the gist of it. I'm not going to be standing here going, this is it now, we've got our club back. We haven't. We but, definitely haven't. You know, hopefully, and I use the word hopefully, um, it can it can lead to something. Um, I'm just going to get into uh, some of the chat in the comments, then we'll move on. Um, yeah, there's there's a few. I think people are sort of talking about some of the outgoings as well. There's been rumours. I think Tellers is on his way out, and Aaron Wambasaka. We're getting rid of some of our fullbacks. So people talking about that. Um, uh, Ryan R says, does this does this mean more money for the Glazers? No, apparently it doesn't. Um, Alan Tenno says Glazers relinquishing power. He's laughing and waving. Yeah, again. Um, Joe, uh, 20 Oli Legend says nothing will change as long as the Glazers have a majority again I, I understand these sentiments it's difficult to get excited or overly confident it's hope rather than expectation it's me more when hope, I see things the, like the thing, this then maybe someday this can it, lead to it you are right though there's, there's a reason though why there's barely any confidence in the fan base with it though because ultimately over the last 10 years and you could even argue the last 17 years the Glazers have given us nothing but derisory rubbish really or, or nothing at all, effectively, until the Super League came out. I think that was the first time we'd heard from them. So I think it's right that there's so many people that are cynical. Trust me, I'm the miserable bastard in the world, but I'm, I'm hopeful for now, but I still think we need to give it time to see how it goes. Obviously, we are still waiting to see if it will pass through, but I think, it, like I say, it's a step in the right direction, and ultimately, patience will become something that we'll all need at this point, because even on the footballing side of things, we're all going to have to have patience. So at this point, it's right that we do this. Must must deserve credit, and I think hopefully it comes to something good in the long term. Uh, Jack Lever says, get Callie at left back. Is he your mate? You know that what? is where I played in my charity game. That paddock, love uh, very nicely. It shouted out. Uh, Rightly so as well, man. It's a great call as well yeah. done for you. So Fred. thanks, Jack, for that. But my 20 minutes at left back, we actually scored three goals. So I oh, it all right. there you go. You see. They were 2 0 down and he scored three goals well, and won 3 2. In all seriousness, the final score was 9 1, so we did all right <laughs> in the end. <laughs> Listen, if it wasn't for you, it would have been 1 0. Yeah, um, I, I said the same after the yeah. game. I don't think anyone agreed, though. No. <laughs> uh, Matthias Anderson, who's been a member of the Academy for 20 months, thanks for your support. And if you are a member or you're thinking about becoming a member, go and check out the members section. I've done a little vid there on my little mini Scandinavian tour. Um, he's gone, uh, hope we can get both Sesco and De Jong over the line. Not the end of the world if we lose out on Sesco, but De Jong, on the other hand, would sting bad. Do you want to talk about Sesco, producer Ethan? Yeah, got the thumbs up from him. He's the man that. Uh, pulls all the levers in here. Hey, he's like, well, I did that. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Sesco. Now, of all the players I've never heard of a month ago, he's one of my fave. Um, this is a kid from RB Salzburg, apparently. Um, and it says uh, they're demanding 45 million for him. Uh, Fabrizio Romano claims talks between United and RB Salzburg are entering key days. What's your, are they, what's your favourite day? Is key day your favourite day? Yeah, it's Christmas my favourite. It always has been, yeah, yeah. I think it's East... No, Pancake Day's my fave. No, I don't like pancakes. You don't? No, Oh, crap. you're mad. It's Pancake Day, then it's Tuesday, then it's Key Day. 
That's key my day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are my favourite days. Anyway, we're entering key days. What as are you, you on about? I don't know. <laughs> as United remain wary, Sesco's price tag may skyrocket by an extra twenty million if they wait another twelve months. Um, Romano's in the mud, isn't he, tonight? Eh? He's, a, he's just a, on a little aside. Yeah, I feel like he's probably jumped the gun a little bit, but I'm sure he's probably still right, And unless someone's done that Photoshop, because it's some good Photoshop with Cucurella in that Chelsea top He's done it. Yeah, he did a tweet, didn't he, here we go, saying that Cucurella's going from uh, Brighton to Chelsea, and then Brighton have issued a statement saying we've not agreed to deal with anyone. He's not going to, well, I'm not saying he's not done it, but he's... He's, there's no deal in place. Fifty-two and a half million. Oh my God, Brighton would be a bit silly to turn that down. Well, they would. Um, I, I think he. I mean, I know they sold Basuma, but I think they can. You know, they'll probably sell him and get some more money. And anyway, I digress. It'll probably end up there anyway. Um, sure. So yeah, Sesco, nineteen years old. He's done all right. He, you know, there's clips of him if you can judge by them that make him look good. I mean, is this getting you excited? Uh, not well. It might do in four years, but I don't feel like it does do right now. Right, I mean, okay. I, I, get, I get it, planning for the future and all that, but with the idea that Ronaldo might be leaving, I still think another striker would be needed because I, I'm, you know, I criticised and slated Marshall a lot last year, but I actually reckon 30 goals at least this year. But anyway, uh, yeah, Sesco might be one of those ones that in four years' time might set the world alight, and I hope he does, and if he does it at United, even better. But ultimately, at this stage, we need more. I mean, the whole. Tra I think this transfer window has been pretty shocking, if I'm completely honest. But uh, Sesco, I think it, it depends if we loan him straight back out, which I'm hearing talks that we would be doing. I think that'd probably be good, but as long as he was getting regular first team football at Salzburg. But if he could do a job straight away, I don't see any issue with him coming in. But to tell you the truth, Jay, I don't know that much about him. The only thing I, I do know is I've seen YouTube clips, and obviously, as we all do. We know we now know that he's probably the best centre forward in the world after watching a five-minute YouTube clip. So I, I'm I'm pretty confident that he's going to get a Ballon d'Or in the next five years. I reckon. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I, I can't I can't disagree. Um, I don't know a lot about him. I mean, I know that he um, scored 11 goals in all competitions um, last season. You and, knew that off by heart. As well. And I'm not reading it off Wikipedia or transfer marks. I know it, and I just if memory serves, yeah. And I think he might have uh, two goals in three appearances in all competitions this season. Yeah, it's yeah. well, 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 uh, well learned. <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, looks like an exciting young player. I get the idea of United buying players before they get astronomical. Yeah, I'm fully. I've, I've criticised the club in the past for waiting until Leicester or whoever have. You know, bought them and then they've done something there, and then we go in for him. Getting in there early kind of makes sense, but I'm not going to pretend that I was saying a month ago we need to get Benjamin Sesco because I weren't because I never heard of him. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. Um, like you say, um, it might be might be a little bit too soon. Some people will be going, you know what, we've got good young strikers, we've got the likes of uh, Charlie McNeil, for example, who I love. Um, I think he's a couple of years at least away from the first team. This kid might be able to come in a bit sooner because he looks physically, you know, like he's. He he's seems physically deal. ready. He's yeah. just. I just wonder if the experience is there. I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with having doubts about the young players, and I think the reason why I have that is we've seen with the likes of Alanga and other young players who've been there this season that they've been heavily criticised with through things that aren't their fault, like coming into a team that they probably weren't ready to come into, but because of the lack of squad depth, lack of just player quality they've had to come in and because of them not being ready it's looked like they were worse than they were or worse than they are so I, I'd fear for him in that sense because we do have a tend to have a fan base that can be quite reactionary and jump on players backs and abuse them needlessly so I'd fear for him in that respect so I do wonder if the loan will do him well because you know we just get that bit more experience that bit more first team football and then come into United maybe in 12 months six months whatever and then then hopefully hit the ground running because I can't see, if we did keep Ronaldo I can't see us offering him a, another 12 months so that could be a perfect time for him to come in replace Ronaldo and get a young hungry striker in don't see the issue in it it's just I hope him and Martial were to be able to work together should we keep him depending on his performances this year No, 100% Erlene Pickering um, in the Super Chat says is De Jong worth all this nonsense uh, Josh Shev94 says get the likes in everyone yeah over 2,000 people watching and how many likes have we got, producer Ethan? Um, we have. I'll find that video now, Jay. We have 
200 likes, like, let's get to a thousand likes. Come on, people. You know what to do. Hit that like button. And if you're not doing, subscribe to the channel as well. We're going to put a link in the chat to subscribe to the channel because we do need you to subscribe because that way you're not going to miss out on anything. If we go live, there's any transfer news or any updates, which we often do, you will get the notification. Uh, we've got over 650,000 subscribers. So that's great, but we want to get to 700,000 subscribers, and with your support, we can do it. Um, Adam McCola, who is a you know a good friend of mine, um, oh. has been talking to Bet Victor as part of their Last Fan Standing um, videos. Um, here's what he had to say, talking about United and Arsenal. Okay, Man United fifth then, which means well, it can only mean. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> who agreed on that? Well, me and Paul are agreeing. No, I love, I'm having, nah, nah, I'm having nah, United nah. 6. Uh, the Arsenal, don't make me say something stupid. Arsenal will not finish up United. What? <laughs> Get that clip. Well, uh, future me looking at this on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what he's just said. Amazing. <laughs> again. <laughs> he's right again. <laughs> uh, All right. Man, so, they had the best season ever, yeah. They finished in the same, basically we finished in the same spot last season. We've improved. We've got a new manager. We're not going to. We're not going to be as bad as we were last season. You had a new manager last season as well. <laughs> <laughs>So that was Adam McCullough with Last Fan Standing for, for Bet Victor. Make sure you're checking it out. Um, what did you make it out? Do you think United will finish above Arsenal this season? I think United, if they don't, I'd be massively shocked. I don't see how Arsenal can finish above us. Their fans seem to be going crazy over a left-back who didn't play left-back and a centre-forward who didn't even play in a team that had no centre-forward. I just don't understand the, the logic and the excitement. Yeah, they've signed a couple of new players, but... I just, I don't, I just don't see it. I don't think Arteta's good enough. I don't think the club's good enough. I still think they're probably a few years away. Um, I just think the delusion of the fans can be quite strange sometimes. You know, I, I probably think fifth, sixth is probably where I, I think Tottenham and Chelsea are definitely better than Arsenal. City and Liverpool, as much as it pays to say, they're definitely better than them. So there's four teams definitely, and I think United and Arsenal and Tottenham and Chelsea will be fighting out for fourth again. But I don't. I I'd probably go with Arsenal being the least likely to get to fourth. If they do, I'd I'll come back in here and eat my shoe if I have to. But I can't see them getting fourth. And if they don't, Arteta's got to be sacked because what's this now? He's third or fourth season. Well, he's I, finished eighth twice and fifth once. Yeah, so that's three. So this is his fourth year. For you know, he's he's got to get fourth. If he doesn't, I don't see this project that he's building because it's clearly not working. I mean, he signed some. Players that just haven't worked. He's got Granite Shaka who just constantly lets him down. I just, I just don't, I don't see it. And I am looking forward to seeing this documentary Amazon are releasing because I, I feel like some of it is ridiculous. Like, like the speakers at Anfield. I mean, you should have just sat them all in silence if you really wanted to. Nice. Uh, make sure. I, I don't know. I, I do actually think. I'm not going to lie to you. I do actually think Zinchenko and. Jesus, decent signings for Arsenal because they're not I, terrible signings. But I, they're not as big as the signings. No, nah, nah, I know Arsenal fans are going OTT. I think the one thing that those two players have got is they're coming from a team that's successful and won things and has that mentality. Because I think far too many players in the Arsenal squad have got the mentality of just losers. Of well, Shaka said that at the end of like, last season you know, with uh, Newcastle, didn't he? So uh, when they lost to Newcastle, and to be fair, he was probably right. I was in and Jesus probably have that right mentality, and it might even do something for them. I just. I don't think it'll be as amazing as they're making out. It, they'll do a job for them, of course they will, but I don't think that they're not that elite level that would take them to fourth yeah. or third. I mean, there's a I reason think, City are letting them go. Yeah, now. exactly. I mean, they, and they've, made great, right. they've made great money on them, don't yeah. get me wrong, but I just, I think if United do finish off our transfer window successfully and get the players that we do need, I can't see, I don't think, think their team's better than ours. And I definitely don't think it's better than Tottenham's, Chelsea's and the other two we don't like. It's a like. good point. I don't think that seems better than us. I don't think their coach is better than ours either. No, I don't. I just think they have made an improvement for me anyway. Uh, Bashkar, Suryak. Don't forget to go and check out Last Fan Standing. Give, drop a comment. Let them know if you think Arsenal are going to or United are going to finish above Arsenal. Say Stretford Paddock sent you. Uh, Bashkar, Suryak, Kumar says... Uh, will cost us more than what City paid for Haaland he's talking about Benjamin Sesko I'm not sure about that I think City's package for Haaland was quite a big one um, James Wood who's been a member of the first team for three months says Arsenal always pipe, over, pipe their players you think Jesus was the second coming of Thierry Henry can't see Arsenal beating us fair enough 
Um, yeah, they do get a little bit carried away, don't they? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they really do. Should we have a bizarre transfer story? Go on then. I, think, I don't think we'll have a, we've had a real left field one for a little while, but it's I've not, got I've got one for you, son. Don't you worry about it. It's not Jamie Vardy going to Manchester United. It's but. Jamie Vardy going from, to Manchester United. As you can see, here, Leicester striker Jamie Vardy. Right? Can, can we just stop right there? Because that's obviously nonsense by the first sentence. Jay, that, that is up there with monitoring the situation of meaningless nonsense. Leicester striker Jamie Vardy is on the radar of both Manchester United and Chelsea. What does that mean? Yeah. Nothing. There's more chance of me signing at left back for Man United after my 20 minute spell for Ernst and Medicide than yeah. Jamie Vardy coming to Man United as our striker. I like the fact you don't sit on the fence, you do you? See, no. I'm going to eat my shit, well, there's more chance of me playing. Uh, Vardy I'm really 35. I don't have to eat my shit. <laughs> Currently has just one year remaining on his contract with Leicester, like despite not regularly being considered amongst the league's most deadly players, as he was some years ago. Vardy still contributed 15 Premier League goals in just 25 games for Leicester last season. Listen, there was a time when I would have had Jamie Vardy at United. Yeah, six years about ago, yeah. 2017-18, around that time, maybe. Um, now, not a chance. He's 35. This stinks like another sort of older player, past his best get him in for a year until we get a better striker in, which we don't seem to do. We just keep getting these older players in. Vardy isn't what, they, what we need. We need some more long-term answers. I don't think we're going to try and get him. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Uh, and nor do I think it should do. Um, get involved in the comments as well. I think this has come from the Daily Star, that bastion of journalistic integrity. So you can make your minds up about that one anyway. Um, let us know what you think. Would you have Jamie Vardy at this club? Um, what did you make of the, the Wagatha Christie trial? That's why I want to know. Were yeah, you team Colleen or were you team Rebecca Vardy? I was Colleen all the way, mate. Um, the Umston Strangler says, up the Umston crew, lads, up the paddock. Best show of the week on. Uh, thank you. Uh, BMW Racing 1974 says, Vardy's a grass. Hey, snitches. <laughs> snitches get stitches, don't forget that, and end up in ditches. Um, football fan GGMU says, for Brixio in the mud, I think he's referring to the... Um, the Cucurella story that we spoke about early, earlier. Sorry, um, Kyle Chesters, who's been a member of the Academy for 11 months. Thanks for your support, Kyle. Says, Sesco is the greatest player I've ever seen this week. I really hope he's on our radar. Um, it's not like us fans to overhype a few things, is it? No. Well, I mean, I did it before, so hopefully we all, we're all right, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Listen, it's what we do as football fans. It's just it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, Jeff Foster says, Skull's about to lace up his boots for this season. Listen. I'd probably still take him and Beckham. I'd be well happy with that, even at 48 years old. We'll have, do you think we'll have an injury crisis that sees Tom Huddleston play for Manchester United during the season? I, re- I, I kind of want it to happen. I, I, I don't know why. I, I just really want to see the meltdown when he comes on. I, I think, yeah, there'll be like a little mini injury crisis that goes on where we lose like four midfielders and Tom Huddleston will be on the bench or yeah. something. When it's like 1 0 to Brentford in April. And then, yeah, and we have so, to bring him someone on. will get injured and he'll come on and then everyone will be like, United are in the mud. Look at this. Look at the state of us. That'd be hilarious. But he's not coming as a player. He's coming as part of the coaching staff at the under 21s. He's I'm replacing Paul McShane, isn't he? And I don't yeah. have an issue with it. I don't see why anyone would. No. Um, Ryan R says Tom Huddleston and then one of those things. What are they, what are them, what are they called? Uh, arrows. I don't know. They just call them arrows. What? Greater than, smaller than. Yeah, it's greater than. Is it greater than? Is that what they call it? Called? That one was greater than. Greater yeah. than. So someone said Tom Huddleston greater than um, Paul McShane. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, that's what Ryan said. Um, yeah, Ryan Alice also said greater than. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I did ask producer Ethan, but he looked at me like I was talking Japanese. Um, Miria Ma- Mikayu Kramer says, I'd rather have a packet of Walker's crisps than Jamie Vardy at United. What, up front or just in general? What's your favourite type of Walker's Chris or Chris in general? Uh, prawn cocktail. Chris. Yes, yeah, good lad. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I always get a six pack of prawn cocktail and I also go mad with Yeah, I do, them. and people eat them and it pisses me off. It does, it annoys me, it that really as well. annoys me. I don't, do you know what I mean? I don't buy food in our house to be eaten. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Uh, <laughs> only, by, only by me. <laughs> um, right, yeah, so Vardy, I don't think this will happen. On the radar, in the bin basically that story that's my opinion anyway and you know stranger things have happened but I don't see that one that's that's filed that under the Oldie Nagalo ones I know Oldie Nagalo did happen but I think hopefully 
we've learned our lesson for going things do like that. Do you reckon in court, like him and Rooney, like him and Wayne Rooney were there, and they were just going, no. "You're right, mate. Like, what's going on here?" Do you reckon they just sort of? Like just trying to stay out of it. Yeah, passionate. you know what I mean. You know when your missus has like a fight in the playground and you just leave it to it. Yeah, just go. Oh, do you know what? You know, should, we just, should we just go some, grab something? Yeah. Some mum's head against the railings and you're scrapping and that, and you just step out of the way and put the kids in the skin. Maybe that was just in Gore Hill. All right, maybe. Yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. My my missus has never had a fight in the playground. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Um, Dean Henderson. Me and Scotty were talking about this earlier on uh, round our way. He's not happy, is he, Dean Anderson? No, he's really not, is he? Hey, he hates well, us. Apparently so. I wouldn't have, I mean, it's a bit of a strange time for him to do this interview, I think, really. But, you know, I, I, I'm curious to know what you think of this, you know, because I'm, I'm a little conflicted. I'm kind of on both sides of it. So, Are you? Yeah. yeah. That's the first time, right, in my years of knowing you, you've ever not had a side. No, you I'm, are quite yeah, sort I just, of vocal and so what, opinionated, uh, yeah, well, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes to Man United or yeah. the Tories. You're a bit like, I don't say this the wrong way, because I like the guy, he's my friend. You're a bit like Alison in that respect, he doesn't tend to sit on I the fence. I don't mind being compared to Alison. Yeah, you don't sit on the fence, you have an opinion, you stick to it. Yeah, well, if I'm wrong, I, I straight away well, delete, that's you delete like, everything. That's when you're not like Alison, because if he's wrong, he just doubles down. Yeah, um, fair enough. So yeah, you, you're a bit, you get his point. I get his point, I think it was bad timing. and. I hate to say it, and I hate to ever say that I agree with somebody on Talksport, but Darren Bent kind of so, put so it out. Yeah, get and out. I should take your mic off. You don't. I should leave something. Uh, but da okay. Darren Bent, as someone who I also don't usually agree with, did kind of put it. I was. I, I would have if he really wanted to do this interview and wanted to double down on it. Wouldn't it have been better to have done it in December after playing really well for four months for Forest? I just I find the timing of it a little strange. I get his point. I get that. After him watching De Gea kind of stink up Old Trafford for the last two, three months of the season and wondering why he still didn't even get a shot, I do get it. I mean, I've got a lot of reservations about De Gea. I love the guy, great servant to United, but I think there's so many issues with, with De Gea as our starting goalkeeper that I'm sure has been mentioned before, but I still think Dean Henderson should have been given a shot. On the other hand, I think it's stupid timing for him to do it considering he is still a Man United player. I also just find it a little disrespectful to his current employer and his, man his current manager. I just, I just, I'm so on the fence with it because the guy earned a lot of money at United and it doesn't matter that he, you know, I get that he wanted to play, but at the end of the day, it is still his employers and I just find it, I'm so on the fence with it because he should have played and I personally think he should have been the number one goalkeeper. But then leaving and going on loan and then going, oh yeah, it was all awful and it was criminal and I sat on the bench. It's like, you know, criminals, criminals people having to use food banks, not earning 120 grand a week sitting on the bench at Old Trafford. I just thought it was, his wording was wrong, his timing was wrong and it could have been done a lot better, I think. But anyway, I'd love to know what you think because I'm, I'm a little... I'm, I just find it a little bit strange and contradictory, right? I get it. You're upset you didn't get a, a chance. I think not even... Wanting to impress the new manager is a bit bizarre. That, yeah, again, like, that comment was you know, odd. I didn't want to play in front of him because then he'd have thought I was mint and I don't, you know, he might have wanted to play Which, me or keep me. Well, I like that confidence, right? But the thing is, it was a new manager, so surely a new manager, new start. Ten Hag could have gone, come in and gone, do you know what? You are better at distributing the ball. You are better at commanding your area. I tell you what, you will be number one and I promise you that for now. Now, I know he's had broken promises, but that was from previous managers. It's a new start. It's a new season. Come in, impress the new manager, and if he's and if he's gone, look, it'll be between you and De Gea. Every, you know, you might play some weeks, he'll play some weeks. Go, look, I don't want to do that. Please send me out alone. But to leave before the new manager comes in, and not even try and impress him for someone that has constantly said I'm good enough and I should be Man United number one, I feel to not even try and stick around until the t new manager comes to actually impress him, I think was a little bit weak-minded from someone who has constantly said how strong-minded he is and confident of his ability to be Man United's starting goalkeeper. So I was a little disappointed in that respect. Yeah, I think it's all a bit silly. Listen, I, there was a time when I wanted Dean Anderson to start, I'm not going to pretend that I didn't. I think he was unfortunate that he got COVID. Then he was unfortunate that David De Gea had a bit of a return to form at a time when it was looking like he could have come back into the team. I also think there's this thing with Dean Anderson. He's got to remember that, yes, he's done OK and done quite well to a certain degree United, He's had some bad games as well. well he's yeah. made mistakes. He hasn't been infallible. He hasn't sort of stamped his authority on that team where you go, he's undroppable, he's amazing. I 
personally at the time would have had him over De Gea because of distribution and stuff like that. But I understood why De Gea kept his place when he came back, I, if you will. I understood because it. Because there were some yeah, good performances but... from uh, David. And also, David De Gea has done something that Dean Henderson's never done, and that's played three or four seasons on the spin for Manchester United and played very well. Dean Henderson's played six, seven months for United and done well. So, you know, you've got to fight for your place at United. There's too much of this... I've seen people going, oh, that's, you know what, he's right, Owen, rah, rah, rah. and a lot of his issues, you know, he says the club, he's talking about Oli there. Yeah, yeah he, you know he, he I mean? may as well have just called Solskjaer by name now. Yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not, you know, Eric and I've got nothing to do with this, he's not even, I don't even think he's that's barely why, him. That's why I found his comment a little strange about that, if I'm honest, but look, I think, I do wonder if that interview was kind of sealed a, a bit of a nail in the coffin for him to leave next year. He signed a long-term contract, but I think maybe he's just given up on his United career after saying that. And for giving an interview to Talksport of all people, of all companies, that I, I think, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, not everyone's terrible on there, but I, I disagree with a few people on there quite, quite a bit. So I, I think, you know, and a company that's so linked to the sun, you know, I, I'll never have respect for something like that. So very disappointed in him. Genuinely thought he could be United's next big goalkeeper, but... It, it might, after that interview, look like it's time to wake up. It has fire. We were talking about this on Round Our Way. It adds a bit of fuel to the fire that maybe he was the, the leaker. Yeah, well, there was rumours so, that he uh, was. So, you know... I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. And I, I couldn't comment too much on it, but it's the, those that have been touted to be the leaks have all left now. Uh, he, you know, I, I think Dean Anderson was the last one of the rumoured ones. So we'll see how this season goes, whether there's a, an obvious dressing room you know, sort of morale boost, but, you know, only time will tell without one, really. Isn't it? Why don't you get your head down and play for the new manager and get yourself back into the team, man? Or do you do, know what I mean? Or do what millions of people dream to do and just play for Man United. Like, mm. uh, the entitlement of some players over the last, you know, probably 18 months has been just quite annoy, just annoy, incredible, you know what, really. The other thing that annoys me about this is Eric Tanai has just inherited a shit show. He has, man. Like, this is nothing to do with him. He gets here, uh, all of a sudden he's that one goalkeeper he can use because he's more or less said I've had enough and I'm off. I mean, he could have, I mean, to be fair, it's an because you're not going anywhere. He could have said, oh, you know, I'm going to stick with you. He's also got the Ronaldo situation. He's not been back, as you said, properly in the transfer window. No. We've lost as well. You might not like Jesse Lingard, Juan Mata, Nemanja Matic, Paul Pogba and Edison Cavani, but those are players that were in and around the first team. Well, I was going to say you know this what I mean? before. A lot of experience. That's something that definitely needs to be brought up, you know, either later on or another time. But the t and I said before about the timing of this. You know, United season starts in four or five days. Like, how as someone who's allegedly wanting to be Man United's number one goalkeeper, who loves the club, who signs long term contract, how can you give an interview to Talksport and kind of just do so much that could really disrupt so much preparation? I think like. There was no need for it, and they, you know, to try, you know, to throw, you know, Ollie under the bus and mention Ten Hag, who he's not even spoken to. It was just, it was completely needless. And I get the whole, oh, media trained of all these new, of all the players nowadays, and I get that some players do want to give a bit more, but this was just so needless to a club that I think has really helped him develop as a good goalkeeper and sent him alone and looked after him. And for one season, Solskjaer didn't want to play him for whatever reason. And you give big long interviews about it, it just makes no sense to me. And it, I think a lot, I get why people agree with him. I think that, that's why I'm a bit on the fence because, again, I was more on the side he should have been playing. But it, it, was, it was just a needless comment, it was a needless interview, and there was no need. Why don't you, you're at Forest now, go and concentrate on the club there, go and work hard there and become the best goalkeeper for the season. For them to keep him in the Premier League, massive club, Forest, you know, Roy Keane was there, you know, they've won the Champions League at the European Cup, sorry. Go and, go and cement a bit of a legacy at that club and go, look, I can play for a big club, now bring me back to Man United, look, Ten Hag, I can do it for a big club, albeit a promoted club, I can do it at United, bring me in. But he's, de he's decided to give this interview, so when you look at it like that, it is a little bit, it is just more stupidity of him, and I think you know it, that's him sort of going, look, I'm done, goodbye, I don't want to be at United anymore. Yeah, I, I get that. Uh, James Wood says, I guess that Dean Anderson has forgotten. He's contracted to United. Very talk sport type interview. Ten Hag will be livid. I think James Wood as well said, which former striker would you have in this side? Rooney would suit the style best, but I love Rude. Who would you have? I was going to say Van Nistroy, because I, I think with Ericsson and Bruno, I think they'd constantly just kick the ball forward to him and he'd just put it in the back of the net. Probably the best striker I've ever seen. Uh, uh, yeah. Did he, didn't he score 95 Premier League goals and a bit of trivia? I'm sure only one was outside the box. 
Really? Yeah. That so sounds about right. I think it. Yeah. I don't. I think I seen him outside the eighteen yard area. To be fair. Yeah. He was just. He just. You know. If he jobs to score goals, he did it better than he anyone. He did it great. He did. He was just shame a fan. at I ended, but yeah, you know, it is one of those. Um, right. We'll move on anyway. Um, and in fact, you know what? I'm going to add. Some people have been going into, into this comment, so I'll get into it. Uh, Ute Hube says rude all day long. Callum Imri says rude. Jali Malmin says Andy Cole would be perfect. Love Andy Cole. Vasil Lomachenko. Um, oh no, sorry, that's somebody's arguing with someone there. Sorry, I'll let them too. Um, JD and Coke says Tevez or Hughes would suit this team. Uh, do you know what Tevez would suit this team? No, not everyone hates Tevez because what happened, but he would actually suit this team. He'd run, he'd run and get the ball back yeah. at least. You know, it, it's a bit heartbreaking how we decided to go about because I did like Tevez. I really yeah. loved him, but yeah, you are right there. Um, Jacob O.C. says, I always preferred York to Cole. Uh, listen, top up two great players for Manchester United. Both helped us win the treble. Uh, let's move on anyway. We've got more stuff. We've got some outgoings. Um, Alex Tellez, close to Sevilla loan. Um, seems that Sevilla was so happy with that loan of Andy Marshall last season that went so well for him <laughs> that they've come back for more. Uh, they won uh, Alex Tellers. This has been reported in the Evening News, in the Daily Mail, in the Mirror. Um, and you see it. It says, we'll complete a loan move to Sevilla by this weekend. Tellers is 29. is surplus to requirements under Tanag, who has brought Terrell Malassia to increase competition for Luke Shaw, while Lissandro Martinez can also cover that position. Had a bit of a bad pre-season for me, Alex Tellers. Looks all over the gaff, I felt. Um, awful end to the season last season. Yes, he wasn't alone because pretty much the whole squad did, but he stood out as someone whose form fell off a cliff. And I think when you look at it, and I like Tellers, he, you know, he, he seems like he ch does try and he, he has got a de half decent dead ball on him, but I just don't think he's anywhere near the level you need. Do you know what? When he first came in, I was I was really happy because I actually thought he'd completely displaced Shaw because ultimately Shaw's probably not had the best career we United. I know we had a good probably six to ten months a couple of seasons ago but I genuinely thought Tellers could come in and go look here's what a proper left back does I just don't think the Premier League was right for him I reckon going to a team like Sevilla are probably doing really well so it's a bit slower play you know we'll be able to get forward a lot more which is probably more his strength I just it, it, I was really gutted for Tellers because I really did like him um, it, like I say I don't mind you not being good enough as long as you put the effort in and try which I, I don't ever really think he didn't do. Yeah. It's just ultimately, I think his quality was probably just a little bit short for Man United and maybe the Premier League as a whole, really. So a bit gutted for him, but it's the way it is, isn't it? Uh, make sure you are subscribing to the channel. There's a link in the chat. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. We're not on a thousand likes yet. I asked for, I think I asked for a thousand likes. Don't I? Come on, people, you can do it. Like, share, and subscribe. No, I agree. I mean, you know, people saying that in. Um, someone just said it, and I'm sorry, I've, I've missed it. And um, that's it. Animal Mother Old Ten says, great left foot, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, you know, he's, he's, he's someone who, like you say, puts a shift in, tries. The quality's lacking there. Uh, also on this move, it seems like wages are a bit of a sticking point in terms of getting tellers sold. Um, so there's, there's also, um, there's, there's been suggestions that United will pay part of his wages. I've also seen suggestions that Sevilla will, so I'm not sure on that. But no option to buy, I don't think. Is that right? Um, I believe there's no option to buy it. Now I've seen, I think it was Laurie Whitwell say um, all the salary will be covered, but no loan fee. Right, but I've also okay. seen reports that there, there is a loan fee and it's only £2 million and part of the salary is covered. So I don't know what side of it it is. Um, either way, it's, it's a player surplus, surplus to requirements, but we still can't seem to sell, which seems to be a stickling point for Man United for so long. And I thought maybe this summer would be something different, but the only player we've sold, I think, so far for a fee is, is it Pereira, I believe? Yeah, about 11 million, isn't it? Yeah, so, and, you know, that, so Fulham. That, that's covered Malassia, but other than that, you know, we've not sold anybody else. We are shit at selling players. And I, I just, the, in fact, I know why, it's because Ed Woodward gave a more stupidly big contract for players that aren't good enough for those stupidly big contracts. A guy that's been an absolute danger to the club and completely destroyed so much about a great club over a nine-year tenure or eight-year tenure. It's, it's something that I know has been spoken about so many times, but what he's done is, is that is criminal to do what you've done to a great club like, like Man United and then walk away with no sanction or accountability from, uh, accountability from it unless Gary Lineker starts saying what a great mate he is because he signed his Signed Ronaldo in his bloody garden. Does me head in. So anyway, carry on. It's something that <laughs> something that's not hurt me at all. Like so. Yeah, as you can see, uh, Cobby says. Is there anything to the Hakim Ziyech rumours? No. No. Is the I answer don't think to that. So. 
Um, people looking at it and going, well, he used to be at Ajax under Eric Ten Hag. I get and it. And Eric Ten Hag's at United now. So, and he's not exactly setting the world alight at Chelsea. They'll probably be willing to sell him. Maybe we could bring him to Old Trafford or maybe he's living with us. I don't think he is. No, um, I can't see that happening. Yeah, I'd be very I, surprised. I feel like people are just jumping on every Ajax player to ever ever play for Ten Hag. Oh, he might go to United because he plays. Who's your favourite ever Ajax player? Uh, quite like Van Basten. He was all right. Van Basten played for Ajax, didn't he? Think yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, yeah, quite liked him. He was all right. No, yeah, um, you know you can't argue. Uh, Clive Ert was good too. Clive Ert was good. Um, Van Basten was good. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, you can't really, uh, can't really argue with any of that, to be honest with you. I hate that, when you ask me questions like that and I immediately forgot every football player ever. It's like when someone says, what's your favourite song and then you forget all music that ever existed. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, I, can't, I, I literally couldn't think of a single player, it took me a second then. Well, you know, it's not your fault. I'd have probably gone with... Daily Blind, maybe. Daily Blind, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Frank Stapleton, Jess mm. Brolson, and he wasn't either, I asked. Um, anyway, one for your dad's. Um, on the De Jong front, right, because we had De Jong on the thumbnail, the De Jong update is, there is no update on De Jong, yeah? That is the update, okay? And I know that doesn't, you know, it's not exactly what you want to hear, but we know that Chelsea are in for him, we know that Manchester United still want him, there's rumours going around or reports going around that maybe United have the upper hand, others people reporting that Chelsea have the upper hand, we know that Chelsea can offer him Champions League football, but well, he can't, maybe he wants to live in London, I don't know, maybe he wants to why play... Why live in London when you can live in Manchester? Like, what a ridiculous thing to say. Honestly, why would you want to live in London, down south, where no one says hello to you, where a pint is like 18 quid, come to Manchester, where you can go in the northern quarter, or to the Nags Head in Ermston, where it's a pint, where it's like two fifty for a pint. Why would you want to live in London? If you want to live in London, then don't come to Manchester. Go away. I think you might be the first person in the history of media that's ever used the Naggy as a, a selling point for hey, someone tell you what, to come to Manchester it's, it's, over uh, London. And I listen. I'm not knocking it. I used to, that was one of my first pubs when I was, you know, when I was fifteen. I mean, when I was eighteen. Um, well, you'd, go in to, there. you'd go to one in Ermston <laughs> or go to one in town and then you'd go in there before Controversial the though, ECC counts as Ermston and it was Dave when I was it's, Dave, it's still technically yeah, I mean, Dave now, isn't causing it? Causing some dramas there between the old M41ers, but I'll let them decide that and uh, sort that out. Um, yeah, so Dion, we'll see what happens there, you know, Callum Soldier. If you want to come to a place where you're going to get a £2 limit on your bus fares, come to Manchester. That's coming in effect very soon. You're not going to get it in London, are you? Hey, Frankie. Um, anyway, Callum, it's been great chatting to you. Where can people find you? Uh, find me on Off United. I'm on there every now and then. Um, find me on Twitter at underscore Callum Stone. I'm on there moaning as usual, so fly over to that. Uh, obviously, the season's starting as well soon, so I'm going to try. Don't you know? hold me to this, but I'm going to try start writing my own stuff again, if I can be asked. Uh, but uh, that's on theunitedroad.com if you want to fly over there and see me moan and write about Man United. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. So. I hope you do start writing again. I love your writing. I, yeah. I mean that. I hope you do. It's, um, it, I try. You do try, man. You always articulate what I'm thinking very well. Um, yeah, so go and check out Callum on all those platforms that I mentioned. Make sure as well, go and check out Off United. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel while you're at it. There's a link in the description. There's a link in the chat. There's links all over the gaff. So make sure you're clicking on oh, them. As well, just a quick one. Yes. I think it's still my pinned tweet, but obviously Jay has mentioned the the charity football game I played in the other day. Uh, I think the link is still open uh, and I think it's my pinned tweet. So if you want to donate I'll tell to you that, what, let's, let's go and have a look to... there. Um, yeah, it is, it is still my pinned tweet. We'll, so we'll, we'll go on better than that. We'll stick it in the chat now. Yeah, that'd be very good of you. So yeah, fly onto that link. If you want to donate for us, that'd be great. Uh, it was a really good day on Sunday. Uh, we raised a lot of money. It was, you know, it was quite emotional for my friend um, whose dad died. So. Uh, yeah, it was just a, a really good day, a really good day to get all the lads back together, play a good game of football. Obviously, like I say, we won 9-1, um, but you know, it was really respectful. It was, a, it was just a, a really brilliant day and a really emotional day. Um, so thanks for anyone that does donate and thanks to you as well, Jay, for supporting us and sharing it and raising awareness to it, which is uh, always very good of you. No, usual. not at all, man. It's a good cause and I'm always happy to do a little bit. It is only a little bit. But it's the least we can do. Jacob OC says, nice one, Callum. And then goes and says, Jay, you've had better shows. Thanks for that, nice Jacob for that. OC. I appreciate hey, that. Appreciate that. Uh, Santa Knott says, I left London. I left London as well. I was down there studying. But come on, 
why would you live in London when you can live in Manchester, as Callum has said. Uh, listen, this has been Transfer Lives with me, Jay Moy, and with Callum Stone. Thanks for all your support and thanks for watching.